Good morning. Good morning. I think spring weather is not everyone today. It doesn't look like it. Anyway, well, we are glad that you all are with us and those that are joining us on Facebook as well. Good morning. Um, the announcements are in the bulletin. Uh, Bible study on Monday and Wednesday, Genesis on Monday, Revelation on Wednesday online. So we'll continue doing those. This week is a pretty calm week, I think, for a lot of things that are going on. Today we will, if you would like to come forward for communion, we would love to receive you at the table as we are with the priesthood of all believers today uh, as well. So I think that's probably all the announcements for today. I think everyone is doing well. Jean is doing well in her recovery. Donna is home and recovering at this point as well. So we keep those people in our prayers as we move about this week. So let us begin and let us stand and begin. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. Yes. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call of our being served in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing our old book, hymn number 439.
us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Baptized. 
And he gave orders to stop the chariot. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Astos and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. We'll read Psalm 22 uh, responsibly. From you comes the theme of my praise in, this, in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fill my vows. Lord, holy and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to all, to a people yet unborn, he has done it. Second lesson is from 1 John 4. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. He has complete. He has given us his, uh, us of His Spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This is how love is made, complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but a perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Here ends the second reading. Lord. You may be seated. 
it's hard to stop reading sometimes scripture when it kind of goes on talking about the same thing. So, let us pray. Jesus, there are many other minds that contend for our allegiance, but you promise that they cannot deliver to remain in you. So it's my job, and you will be found, and in you will be found true success. Make us a top priority, says our family, and yet you will find, and in you we will find unmatched love. Stick with me, says my religious tradition, and you will enjoy the deepest spiritual experiences. Plug into status or riches or pleasure, says the world, and you will find yourself. But all of these vines, dear Lord, even those consecrated for our or created for our good, cannot compete with you. You alone are the true vine, and in you alone do we find our rightful place in the world. For your strength alone will our beliefs count for eternity. So we choose by your grace to remain in you, to make our homes in you forever. Amen. Well, I was thinking about, you know, you know, sometimes when we get ready for spring and we want to go out and start cutting the vine and the branches, we need to probably put on some gloves because there's stickery things out there or there's muddy things that get us dirty or whatever. And so we have to put on our gloves. We want to stay clean because we don't really want our hands to get dirty. Or we don't want our hands to get poked. And we don't want our hands maybe to get blisters. There's only one problem. When we put on gloves, it separates us. It separates us from feeling the very earth that God created. It separates us from feeling what that is like. Now I know when I bring the rose bushes, I don't really want to get poked. But I often forget to go put my gloves on. Instead, I think maybe we need to remember God took off his gloves for you and me. He didn't wear them the day he went to the cross. He took the pain of that with him because he loved us so much. He was going to get dirty for you and me. He was going to take all of that. And I think that sometimes we need to, maybe we have to take our gloves off in life and get dirty. Maybe we have to be the dirty ones to touch the lives of those who are needing us. So maybe as, as kids, maybe we've got, kids have it right. They, you know, I remember the day that uh, you know, we went out and played in the mud and we made mud cakes. Of course, it was only my brother who would eat them. Oops. He, he, he fell for it. I don't know. He thought they were, I guess, pretty good. Of course, this was also the brother I could dress up in dresses. Well, he doesn't fall for that now. But you know what? I think God wants you and me to take off our gloves. Take off all of the stuff that covers us, that tries to put barriers between us to say, here we are. Love us like we are. Sins and warts, mistakes we make, things that, oh, well, you know, we may not like, but here we are. You know, what I think is amazing in this text is that the fruit, fruit, the word itself is mentioned 54 times in the New Testament. 54 times we get the word fruit. And it always means these things. It always talks about repentance, practicing truth, answered prayer, and the, the offering of dollars or money 
by the believers. Being in Christ-like character and winning believers to Christ. See, the fruit of the believer is really bringing another to faith. This lesson is really about that, about we as a believer, that what do we do to share the story of Jesus with another? How do we love beyond the surface dirt, beyond the prunings that maybe need to happen? Because God's doing those prunings. Maybe when I get poked by that rose bush, it's a reminder, or I got stabbed by cactus. It reminds me that God is there and he's taking care of pruning me in my life as I need to be pruned. Maybe God is reminding you and me that we need to, yes, listen to those prunings and change those ways, but also calling you and me to, to welcome and invite others to become part of the faith. And if, if the goal is really about not maybe, although we know if we grow believers, we will grow churches. In the process, it's the byproduct is growing churches. Jesus isn't worried about how many churches there are. He's worried about how many believers there are that we're telling the story to. He wants us to tell that story from here to the ends of the earth. And how we do that is really just being real and authentic. It is saying, I love you no matter what. See, I can love you no matter. We've all made mistakes. In fact, last Sunday was the perfect example. If y'all wanted to not know how worship goes, just stay tuned. Because apparently the pastor will change how things happen in worship because she forgets where we're going. Because we're having fun, life doesn't always take us down the road we think we're going down. Sometimes we make the diversion because there's something else we need to do. Someone else we need to see. Somewhere else we need to be. I think the fruit the fruit in the vine is really about that, but we need to stay connected because we know that the roots of where we are is in Jesus. The roots and the main branch are Jesus, and we have to stay connected. If we get off on our own accord, we're no longer grafted and part of that plant. The roots are so important for you and me. It is about how do we want to tell the story in our lives? How do we tell others where we've been or where we're going, maybe? And invite them along the road with us. It's about the unit. It is about inviting others to be part of the journey that we're making. It's not always an easy road. We all have our ups and downs. But Jesus is clear that if you stay in me, I love you so much that I will hold you through those horrible times in our lives. I will carry you when I need to carry you. And I will walk with you when you're able to walk again. I had to chuckle Thursday night. We were at a Bible school meeting. And now, Pastor Jim, or Father Jim and Pastor Janelle and I had already met ahead of that. Now, this was after I had been at the food pantry and everything else all day. Okay, so we're sitting at the meeting with, with some volunteers to help with Bible school and that kind of thing. And we were about an hour into the meeting. And this is hilarious because I kept asking, when are we meeting again? That's all I wanted to know. I was over the meeting. Okay, I was done. I apparently was checking out. Well, finally, Pastor Janelle and Pastor Father Jim had already left. I mean, how dare him leave the meeting early, but he had something else to do. So he left. And finally, Pastor Janelle was like, you know, I think we need to wrap this meeting up and just answer Pastor Cindy's question. 
about when are we meeting again. And she looked at me and she said, I'm really not sure because our theme is, our, our curriculum is um, tomorrow's, tomorrow, tomorrow's a bath. She said, she is not only on Mars, she has gone beyond Mars. We don't even know where she's at right now. Because she's so far out there. And I had some. I mean, I, apparently my face said it all. And we stood outside afterwards talking. And one, I, I, it would be so cool because I got to hear the calves talking. We're, we're bellowing a little bit over there uh, in the pen. And she said, I'm like, well, thank you for doing that. And I said, how did you know? And she said, you were no longer with us. She said, you really had gone to Mars, and you kept on going. And I said, but, and she said, no, it's okay. She said, we were done. Just don't want to make a decision about anything. And she said, what we're having to do is continue to love our people because there's decisions to be made, but no one wants to make the decisions. And so she said, what you did is actually help us understand that even God in the midst of you being in Mars or somewhere, that he loved you enough that we could pray ourselves out of that meeting and bring us back. A little interesting as I was thinking about then this lesson on top of that. And is that not what God maybe does? That He takes us to Mars and beyond to tell the story of Jesus to those who may not have ever heard it, but also need to know that we don't have to stay completely connected with maybe reality all the time. Maybe we do need to see God in that world and in our world, in our space, in Axel, as well as in Arizona, or in Nebraska, or wherever we are. Maybe God is opening us up to say, I love you so much that no matter where you are, I'm with you. So Pastor Janelle was like, it's okay. We just go Pastor Cindy goes off in a world. We know Father Jim just leaves the meeting and he gets to be in charge now. And we know that Pastor Janelle is got it all under control. But what I know from this reading, from all of our readings, is that God is wanting to be part of yours and my journey. Even if it's to Mars and beyond, whether it be just into Axel or to Frankfurt, to Manhattan or Topeka or Kansas City or Arizona or wherever in Nebraska, God loves us so much. He is with us on that journey. But His expectation is His expectation of you and me is that we will share our story and invite others to become believers, to bring others to us, to faith, the faith and the love of the one who gave everything, who took off his gloves on that faithful day, took them off, and wore everything for you and me. He didn't leave his gloves on, hoping he wouldn't get dirty. Instead, he took them off, and maybe, maybe he actually did lay them at the foot of the cross to say, I've given it all for you. Now, love me so much that I will just beam from you from here to Mars from here to wherever we go. Take off the stuff and be real with who we are as God's children. That's what this is all about. To be fruit that do multiply. Those are the ones that are faithful and want to be Christ-like who give, but not out of having to give, but because we want to give. Giving 
of ourselves, taking our gloves off, and getting dirty. Amen. We will sing hymn number 499. Come thou out of every blessing. Oh, Lord of all, we ask you to be in our community, 
He asked me to be with those who serve in healthcare, EMS, fire, military, teachers, counselors, and all those in our country and abroad, Lord, in your mercy. We do ask that you stay with those who are suffering this day. Continue to be with Stan and Larry, Debbie and Peggy, Jean and Donna. Let them know your healing hands wrap around them, that they may know your presence. Lord, in your mercy. And God, we just lift up each of us. That as you have loved us so much and you left everything at the foot of the cross, you bore everything for each of us that we should love you. Let us be loved and share that love with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us continue with receiving our offering. You may stay standing as we sing our offering prayer. Father, 
who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The meal is prepared. Come and feast. You have received the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as a sign of his love. Now this day that we go forth to love and to serve. In his name we pray. Amen.
now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.